Hello again! I started with um, finishing the little commode and um, I made the center parts on the drawers and now I still have to do the raised bits in the center and the apron which goes below there. Um, but <laughs> I looked everywhere and I could not find the bits of wood that I was supposed to use for uh, to cut those. So uh, I looked in my own um, wood stash and I found a bit of mahogany um, which really is the same color. I mean that is perfect with that. So I can now continue. <laughs> It's lucky that I have these things in my stash. <laughs> and I'm also lucky that I still have all the bits of of the hardware. I didn't lose those. And um, I may still um, gild them because they're not all the same color, which is something that I find annoying. <laughs> but um, we'll see. I could use this for um, gilding the uh, hardware and I have another one. So there are different colors. I have a box full of this. Um, there's a different, this is a quite a yellow one. And here's more of a warm gold. This is also very gold. I think this is the best one. And this one is called Regency Gold Liquid Metal. And it's from um, Cornelissen in London. I finished the drawers and the apron, cut the apron and um, made all the bits in between here so um, that's finished and tomorrow morning I will spray some varnish on it uh, and then I started doing the shaping the marble top and here it is I've shaped the edges and I was cutting um, a little bevel or an angle on it what is that called and then there was a weak spot and this happened. It broke and I was afraid that might happen because it's it's not very strong. Uh, so I'll have to glue that together again and um, yeah, I still have to cut a little bevel here on this side and that corner. But, um, well, you know, it happens. <laughs> well, I managed to fix the crack, which was over here. And I think it looks really good. You can hardly tell it's there. And um, I had another little chip up here. And I filled that in as well. And I used super glue, just plain old super glue and uh, filled in the crack and sanded it down. It looks great and you cannot even feel that there was a crack there. And more importantly, you, can, you cannot see it. So now I'll, I'll just have to sand that down. This is um, waterproof silicone carbide Wallpaper, uh, wallpaper, sandpaper, uh, 400 grit, um, which is fine. And um, it just needs a bit of a sand. <laughs> and I, I do, it should be glued onto a, a backing board of sandpaper, but I just I haven't done that. Uh, 
sure. It's that quick. I'll probably sand a few more times with uh, a finer grit to make it shinier. But it looks really nice. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Good old super glue. <laughs> Here's 600, so I'll do 600 first. See, this is the front. I think it's finished. <laughs> you really cannot tell there was a crack there. It just looks part of the marble. <laughs> I love that. And This is the second coat. It's finished. I gave it a few coats of French polish and then I sanded it in between with a very fine grit and um, and finally I put a little coat of wax on it and uh, a polish and now it's finished. And of course the drawer is open. And they close again. <laughs> Very pleased with it. I learned a lot. And um, I managed to fix the, the marble. And you can hardly see it. And then I cut a chamfer on this side as well. Is that That's what I was doing when it broke. I was cutting the little chamfer here. So, all in all, it's not perfect because I still, um, I did not fix the little chip there because I didn't have the banding. I couldn't find some of my materials that I, sh I, I think I brought them, but I guess I, I couldn't find them. So that's still on there, but you know, it's an antique. It has some flaws. <laughs> I love it. Very pleased with that. I don't know about you, but I love books. And uh, I often buy them. Uh, and also in second-hand stores. Um, and this one, I just got these yesterday. And uh, from a second-hand store. And uh, it was only one euro. And the other one I will show you next is was only 125. So that was a good deal. And uh, this one is about the doll's house belonging to Petronella de la Cour. And she was a 17th century uh, doll's house collector and maker. So this is a 17th century house. And it is in the 
Centraal Museum in Utrecht. And at the moment it's not on display because they were doing some renovations and uh, some work on it. And I think it will be on display at the end of 2022. So I will go there and um, do a post on that uh, in the future. But at the moment it's not possible. Um, but this book was written by the same author that wrote the Dutch Doll's House Bible, <laughs> as we call it. Um, Yet Pijzel Domisse. Domisse. Uh, and this one was from uh, 1987. Um, but it's a great book. And it has a lot of detailed photos and um, lots of information, which is really good. So, and it's not just black and white photos. And it describes every room in the doll's house, one by one. And um, details a lot of the, um, the miniatures in there. And it talks about the dolls and about the owner. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this one. It's a good book. So if you haven't been out to the uh, secondhand stores, look at that. It's a euro. I know it's an old book, but it's still in good condition and uh, very happy with that one. And the other one is an American book. and It's a lot older. <laughs> this one is from 1972. Um, yes, I was alive then, but... <laughs> Uh, and this is a very different book. I haven't been reading too much in it yet. But um, what I find interesting in these books is A, it, it gives you a lot of information um, on older houses. And um, and also, it, it sometimes it, it's quite different how we look at things. So this is like 50 years ago, and um, things can change in 50 years, <laughs> and attitudes can change, and um, res research can change, and these are just black and white photos, which is a bit of a shame, but um, there's a lot in there. Oh, there's some color pictures. And also tastes change. Um, although this one's still popular. Interesting. But I like these old books as well, just to have a little read. And uh, like I said, look at what has changed over the years. Here's something I found interesting. Here's some glass work. Um, and it says, the collector will find it almost impossible to find miniature glassware in the shops, but several miniaturists carry some fine examples. The South Shore, the South Shore Woman's Exchange is one. The Lilliput Lilli shop, shop is another. Their glass is hand-blown and may be ordered in color, transparent and or opaque ware. It is made of Pyrex. Now, lovely as it is, that's not the quality, or, where you, <laughs> quality of glass we're used to today. Uh -huh. So I find that interesting and quite funny. Here's a chandelier. Um, yeah, but as, as a vintage pieces, they're, they're interesting and fun. So,
I think the quality of those houses has improved greatly. But yeah, interesting and fun. Um, this is where it came from. Wasn't that exp well? Yeah, it was fifty years ago. I was going to say it wasn't that expensive when it was published. Can you see that? Um, Eight ninety five, nine ninety five in Canada. But then, <laughs> then again, it was fifty years ago, so that probably was um, quite expensive. But written by Mar Marion Marion Meave O'Brien. The next project I'll be working on finishing is this um, George III serving tray, which was a seminar by Jeff Wanacott. And um, I didn't finish it. <laughs> um, this is the base and I did do the oval inlay and that's just a little bit of glue residue that's on there. That just sands off, it's not a problem at all. And um, here I have the rest of the... There's the handles. Don't lose those. And here are the edges that I still have to put around the um, tray. Um, as you can see, uh, they go like that, I guess. <laughs> like that. So, like that. Or like that. I don't know. I guess the, the long end is up. Yes, of course, because that then sits on the bottom. Okay, yeah, so I'll do that. I have to cut all the angles on the small pieces of wood and glue them around it. Um, and we did get a worksheet, so I just have to re re read it. <laughs> already started gluing the one of the pieces on there and I realized I had still had to sand the glue residue off um, because of course it's going to be a tray with an edge and then you won't be able to get it smooth and flat on the inside anymore so uh, I've done that now and uh, it's looking really good and it's so smooth I love that and now I'll start gluing and uh, fitting the the edges in the corners. That's a lot of work to try and get them precise. get so engrossed in what I'm doing I forget to take a video of it but um, uh, the instruction said to cut two angles on the sides of the tray so there's one angle here um, 
I think that's hard to see, but that edge isn't 90 degrees anymore. It's more, um, I don't know what that is, 20 maybe? Or the other way around. I, I'm not very good at the um, at angles. And then there's a 45 degree angle at the bottom right there. So like that. And they're, they're hard to see, but the effect is is absolutely there um, it makes it so much more elegant so that was not easy I can tell you because <laughs> it's hard to keep the sanding block straight and um, to get the correct angles on there but yeah it looks nice and now I have to what Attach the handles. Oh, I should have done that before the 45 degree. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, I'll do that now. I don't think it will be a huge problem. I can still do that. Oh, I understand why I should have done that. Drilled. The, I should have drilled the holes first. And then do the 45 angle because the holes are going right in there or right above the 45 degree angle okay well i'll see if i can still um fix that <laughs> first i'll try and get a sense of how oops, um how much room i have so that's the depth so that ends there oh, that's plenty okay so the handles will have to be between that line and the bottom somewhere Well, I finished the tray and I finished it in the same way as I did the chest of drawers with a few coats of shellac or French polish and with a very light sanding in between and then um, a coat of wax. And before I finished it, I also uh, attached the handles and um, well, it's done. <laughs> I'm glad it's finished because often I don't finish all the class projects, but um, yeah, I really like it. Happy with that. Well, I've been quite productive this past week. I finished the commode and the tray and I've made the tool caddy. So let's see what else I can make. Now I think I should finish the bed curtains for the French bed in the bedroom. So the first thing I should do is finish the hems. Um, stitch that. And as we're having such nice weather, what could be better than doing a little bit of stitching in the garden? it doesn't look very neat but um, I didn't want to fold over the seam twice so then uh, it would look neater but it would be so thick and I didn't want that but I'm almost finished with this and um, you'll see the end result next week until next time <laughs>